So how would an IA branch out into other losses other than CAT? How do you branch out to other losses? So how, how are you able to handle other losses as a claims professional besides CAT? Well, I mean, so here's the difficult part for me on that is that, so you don't have to decide if you're going to do CAT or just dailies, but I will tell you that if you're wanting to do dailies, don't expect a lot of work if you're doing CAT because a CAT's going to come along. You're going to want to go make that big dollars and you're going to run off and do that. And you're going to have to tell your daily firms, Hey, I want to be gone for a while after they've been depending on you. Yeah. It could create a problem. Yep. Yep. And, uh, yeah. If you want to do, there's a lot of things. It's the insurance is a broad industry. There's a yep. lot of stuff that you can do. I mean, there's, there's auto, there's liability. There's, like you said, there's casualty, commercial healthcare industry stuff. Um, there are independent adjusters handle all different kinds of claims. There's marine, there's inland marine, there's, I mean, there's all different kinds of claims. The, I would say that, that a, a progression for an independent adjuster, uh, you know, you can do cat for a few years and really get your claims chops down. But I would say, you know, you, you probably want to try to always be moving up a little bit. Um, if you're doing cat residential property, <coughs> then the next logical step from there is going to be commercial, yep. right? Commercial claims. So where I was going a second ago was if you're doing cat and you're trying to get into other stuff and you're trying to juggle more than cat, just remember whenever you get a, you know, called to do a cat, you've got to up and leave. Okay, so whatever other pursuits you are doing have now been put on hold. And right. those companies that you were doing that type of work with, they've now been put on hold. And so if you don't have a solid relationship with those companies prior to jumping out and leaving them, um, chances of getting work on the way when you come back is more difficult. It's like starting all over again. And I know this because, as I mentioned before, I went on seven different assignments this year out of town. Every time I came back in town, I got work, but I wasn't getting the volume of work that I was getting prior to the first time I left this year. Okay. And, and it's still not back there. And as a matter of fact, because I left seven times this year, um, one of the companies said, Hey, look, man, we just can't have you coming and going like this because right. we, we like using you and we get to the point where we depend on you and then you up and go again. And that just creates too much of a problem. So I've lost a source there. And, and it's not, you know, and again, I do several different types of claims. I do property, I do auto, I do heavy equipment, I do RVs, you know, um, I'm doing all kinds of things like that. And this was a company that I did a lot of heavy equipment claims for, you know, and they're just, they pulled the plug on me yeah. because of, I wanted to be a cat adjuster and I wanted to go out and, and, and work that this year. And so you have to, you, you don't have to be one dimensional. Okay, but you just have to realize that if you're going to do cat, whatever, and I did cat on both property and and auto and equipment, but you just have to realize, are you going to do cat? Are you going to pursue something else? Because cat is really going to you really make great money in it, and I had a great year. Yeah, um, it's going to hurt you, you know, when you're trying to do other things other than cat. Yep, yep. That's it's it's almost one or the other, um, unless you develop really good relationships with yeah. a handful of companies that can feed you stuff over the winter when there's not really any cat, right. but it's still, and that's where that, you know, photo and scope stuff and the virtual assist stuff can kind of come into play because yep. you can turn that on and off on your Correct. phone. And that's still, I mean, in, in a, a lot of cases, the money can be, you know, almost competitive with, with what you might make it. And as I've a done a well with photo and scope. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I do a few, you know, a week and yep. it's helping, you know, feed my herd of dogs. <laughs> right. So, but, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's, uh, it's, 
Yeah. I don't know if I've seen that people complain about it that much these days because I mean it's two years ago it was like you, you say virtual assist or photo and scope on social media and you would just I mean Get your blasted. computer would turn on fire catch yeah. on fire they're um, still out there yeah they're still out there I think they've just kind of given up complaining <laughs> yeah <laughs> well and the thing is is like it's it's in the salad days you know, as a as a cat adjuster, cat property adjuster in 2005 mm -hmm. or 2001, you know, you're getting 65 or 70 percent of the fee bill. The fee bills are high and you're, you know, you're just you're able to run and gun and just like you, you can crush it pretty easily these days with the computers and everything. Everybody's competing with their apps and their technology and their insure tech stuff. And it's still all up in the air, right? So there's a lot of uncertainty on our end, like, well, what's it gonna look like when, it all, when the dust settles? Mm -hmm. And who knows? I mean, it's, it's I, I, I think that the, the carriers, they still compete on customer service, and they're gonna, you know, if they try to make things convenient for, for some people. Um, it's inconvenient for others. It's inconvenient for others, so it's, they, it's is who knows what'll what'll happen, but that's why I say you know if 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 you have a progression in your career, if you get out of like the little claims, the hail claim, the you know, residential hail claims, which is you know it's kind of the bread and butter of a cat adjuster, but at the same time it's kind of small time compared to being a commercial cat adjuster or like a commercial daily adjuster or a general adjuster or a large loss adjuster, or somebody who specializes a mm -hmm. little bit, condo, right. You know, nobody likes doing condo claims because they're so complicated or they get, they're just, there's too many moving parts in a condo. I don't like doing them, but I could, you can definitely see where if somebody said, you know what? I know nobody likes to do condo claims. So I'm going to be the condo guy. I'm going to be the, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be the one, the, the go-to person that's, you know, can knows everything that there is to know about condos and I knock it out of the park. So if there's condo claim and condo claims can pay really, really well. They're like commercial claims. They can be right. huge. So even on the cat side with hail or whatever, they can be gigantic. Um, so if you specialize and you, and you, you build a level of expertise, that's, that's, that can't be replicated by an app. I mean, then, you, then you've, you move your career forward in a way that kind of insulates you from this, all this technology right. changing stuff. Right. And back to the um, virtual assist, it, it works well. I mean, it. There's some frustrating things about it. You know, we've we've been talking about one that I've been dealing with now for a couple of weeks. But uh, you know, I've done well with it. I mean, I. I mean, prior to. I mean, that's what I was doing whenever I had my accident. You know, and and uh, came sliding off a roof. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's what I was doing. And, um, and I was making, you know, I was making several thousand dollars a week doing it, you know, and, you know, you can knock out five a day easy, you know, sometimes six a day, if there was the, if there was enough volume there to do it. And it, the great part about it is, Hey, you're just showing up, taking pictures, you know, documenting stuff. Yeah. And then you're done. You're done. And you're only, I mean, and depending on what you did and equipment used and how much you did on that particular deal, you could make 250, 300 bucks a pop on them. And you're not having to deal with anything. And once you walk away from it, you're done. So I don't see what the big, you know, complaint is about this. But uh, complainers are going to complain. Haters are going to hate, <laughs> you know. Well, and that's honestly, that's the easiest and the funnest part of the, the whole process. Yeah scoping yeah the loss right yeah right in the claim it sucks yeah all the rest of that stuff making phone calls yeah. doing reports and glrs and no just i can just go out and just scope losses and then just get paid through an app on my phone you know and and I'm uh gonna do, i'm gonna do and, it I mean, and i work with a couple of different companies doing that and man i enjoy it and there's some perks there's some hidden perks to to doing that and and um you get into doing it, and you'll find it, and you'll you'll find it. It's not so bad after all. So, hope we answered your question, young lady. 